Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Welcome to Grace Episcopal Church. It's great to be with you this afternoon. On this uh, uh, 23rd day of February, we are celebrating, commemorating uh, a wonderful Christian man of ancient Christendom called Polycarp. And so we remember him this day. I invite you to turn your, to your Books of Common Prayer, page 355, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 356. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our colic prayer for this day is found on the insert uh, with our scriptures at the top of the page. O God, the maker of heaven and earth, you gave your venerable servant, the holy and gentle Polycarp, boldness to confess Jesus Christ as king and savior, and the steadfastness to die for his faith. Give us grace, following his example, to share the cup of Christ and rise to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear from God's holy scriptures. Today our lay reader is Hannah Shelley. A reading from John's Revelation, chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna wrote, write, These are the words of the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your affliction and your poverty, even though you are rich. I know the slander on the part of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Beware, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have affliction. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Whoever conquers will not be harmed by the second death. The word of the Lord. Please read Psalm 121 responsively by whole verse. I lift my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. microphone on there we go be reading uh, the Lord be, we let's start again the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew glory to you Lord Christ this is from chapter 20 verses 20 through 28 when the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons and kneeling before him, she asked a favor of him. And he said to her, what do you want? 
She said to him, declare that these two sons of mine will sit one at your right hand and the one at the one at your left and your in the kingdom. But Jesus answered, do you not know what you are asking? Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, we are able. He said to him, you will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand at, and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard it, they were angry with their two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Christ. May what I am about to say be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So I have to admit, Polycarp of Smyrna was probably one of my favorite martyrs and uh, holy people of God uh, before when I was in seminary. He was a fascinating person. He was born, uh, they believe, around uh, 69 AD. Okay, a long time. So if you think you're old, you're not that old. This guy was old. He was part of the church of Smyrna and uh, traveled around and was probably the reason why we had a reading from the uh, book of Revelations today from John as Revelation is because he was a apostle of John. He uh, was noted to help uh, squish out uh, agnostic Gnostic heresies uh, in the second century. And according to Irenaeus, uh, who knew Polycarp, as he was uh, probably one of the finest students of John, probably not as different as we, as we read the uh, revelation of John, uh, Polycarp was a lot more, uh, probably more subtle. He was from the church of Philippi originally, and so that's where John and him met. And it was there that he went out into different accounts to spread the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And so today, on this day, on February 23rd, uh, we believe that he was martyred uh, for the church. And we have uh, written uh, uh, accounts of that in probably around the year 156. He was uh, around 86 years of age at the time of his death. And he said to, uh, to those who, uh, he was asked to uh, s slander the word Christ in front of many others, and he refused to do so. The mob that were there, uh, who were Gentiles, were primarily uh, ones that wanted to do harm to him. But the person who was in uh, charge of the king's accounts uh, thought that this little old man was not to be, uh, to be harmed as brutally as they wanted. They wanted to first uh, to have him fed to the wild beasts of that day, and they decided not to do that, but to burn him at the stake. Whatever is worse, I don't know what. Either one was terrible. But it is noted that he was stated to have said this prayer before he died, or while he was uh, at the stake. He said this, Lord God Almighty, Father of your beloved and blessed child, Jesus Christ, through whom we receive knowledge of you, God of angels and of hosts of all creation and of the whole race and of the upright who live in your presence, I bless you that you have thought of me worthy of this day and hour to be numbered among the martyrs and share in the cup of Christ for resurrection to eternal life, for soul and body in the incor incorruptibly of the Holy Spirit. Among them, may I be accepted before you today 
as a rich and acceptable sacrifice, just as you, the faithful and true God, have prepared and foreshown the bro and brought me to about this place. For this reason and for all things, I praise you and bless you. I glorify you through the eternal heavenly high priest, Jesus Christ, your beloved child, through whom be glory to you and with him, the Holy Spirit, now for the ages to come. Amen. That was the account that is written from us, most likely from Irenaeus. And why we celebrate this man today is a reminder of that from generation to generation, our faith is important to all of us. And so as we pass on from one life to another, the seeds of faith are only being planted by us, the faithful, those who have been baptized by, by the faith of Jesus Christ. For you see, it doesn't matter how long you lived or how long you do live in life. What we do in this life matters. And so you don't have to be martyred for the faith, but what we do ask is that we live out our baptismal covenant. As John's book of Revelation reminds us, we will be tempted away by many types of things in this life and maybe into the next. But what we do have in confidence today, as what we hear from Matthew's gospel, is that ours, uh, what we would like from God may not be always what we get. But what we do have is to be able to try to do God's will today. Let us discern that faith as best we can with God's help and with the Holy Spirit, just as Polycarp did hundreds of years ago. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, let us now stand and let us offer our prayers as people of God. I invite you to turn to page 387, page 387, prayers of the people form three. I'd like to especially today remind us that as we are praying and worshiping at this moment, the national church, the Episcopal church is offering a vigil prayer service to the people of Ukraine and Russia, that they may find a peaceful resolution. And so let us be mindful as we offer our prayers as well. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. There may be justice and peace among the nations. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. May we be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We do pray for peace in Ukraine and for the people of Ukraine. We ask you, Lord God, to help the leaders of Russia and Ukraine and the rest of Europe Help us to find a peaceful resolution as we lift up our prayers with all of our brothers and sisters in Christ this day. I also pray for all those who are celebrating a birthday or wedding anniversary this week. We pray, Lord, for Julie Yeager and Phil Counts who celebrated their birthdays earlier this week. We also pray, Lord, for uh, peace and, and for the end of this uh, end pandemic uh, of COVID-19 and especially for all of our loved ones that have been taken away or 
continue to be hurting from the lingering effects of uh, COVID-19. I pray for the, uh, for the family of June Kyler who passed away yesterday of our parish community and for uh, her family. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd also like to lift up and pray for all those who may be traveling this evening, and especially our the road crews uh, as we face a, another uh, winter storm warning uh, this, after, this evening as we lift up our prayers, O Lord Christ. Let us now offer and ask God for forgiveness in those times when we have failed to be kind to one another. Turning to page 360 in your Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace be with you all. God's peace. Please be seated. I have a couple of announcements for us today. Uh, just like to, uh, so next Wednesday will be, is Ash Wednesday, and so there will be a noon service uh, at Ash, for our Ash Wednesday service. We'll also be celebrating um, at 6 p.m. with our choir uh, that evening. Uh, also, I'll be on, out on Hinkleville Road uh, in front of Hancock of Paducah, uh, to do uh, Ashes to Go, if you would like to partake. If you can't come to one of our services, uh, you're welcome to stop by from uh, two, to f 2 to 4. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. 2 to 4 uh, on next Wednesday for Ashes to Go. Also, on Tuesday for Shrove Tuesday, we'll be gathering here at 6 p.m. for a reconciliation service, if you'd like to join me. Uh, for a, a very short reconciliation service uh, of prayer uh, as we prepare for the Lenten season. You're welcome to join us at 6 p.m. Also, remember, every Sunday we have Mission Soup Sunday, and so we're trying to raise money for our youth group to go to mission uh, trip this summer, and we have uh, $6,000 uh, to raise. How much have we gotten so far? Just over two thousand dollars, and so we got four thousand more dollars to raise. Chili is the soup of the day. All right. Well, it's chili. Some people like it thick. Some people like it soupy. So, any. Yep. Also, uh, we're forming small faith groups. If you'd like to begin one and host one, you're welcome to. Uh, I have con uh, information to do that. It's very easy to do uh, and to help us uh, start uh, small group faith groups in little churches in your own home or wherever you'd like to come. Also, every Wednesday, uh, after Ash Wednesday, we'll be getting uh, a small group here at church. If you'd like to join me, we'll be using the book, uh, a, a Spring in the Desert. Uh, by Father and uh, Frank and his wife, uh, Victoria Logue, uh, if you'd like to join us for that. It'll be a lot of fun. 
Also, uh, Lent Madness begins after uh, Ash Wednesday next week. So if you'd like to pick up a book, uh, or if you go online, you can uh, download the brackets, uh, all the uh, biographies uh, for all the uh, holy men and women uh, are in those books. And uh, if you'd like to have some fun learning a little bit about Christian f history, it's a great and fun way to do it uh, by voting uh, each week, each day uh, for each of these people. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a sacrifice unto God. Please stand. We are on page 361 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 361. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to, unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all your saints who have been the chosen vessels of your grace and the lights of the world in their generations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed it is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. To be in him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, eat. Please raise your vessels. Sorry. Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that, you may, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of our salvation and the blood of the new covenant. 
Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Polycarp and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. You may lower your vessels. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. And once again, raising your vessel. The gifts of God for you, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. At this time, if you'd open up the bread portion of your vessel and place it in the palm of your hand, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Turning your vessel over to the wine, the blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation. This time the vessels were being picked up, the empty vessels for our altar guild to please dispose of properly. If you'd like, you may be seated. Jesus said, Abide in me as I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. John chapter 15, verses 4 through 5, verses 8 through 9.
Let us pray our prayer after Holy Communion. If you please stand. We are on page 366, page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth and be the church. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a wonderful afternoon and be safe.